how to use the Apple audio loops in Logic Pro X. You wanna liven up your tracks and uh, Apple audio loops in Logic is a great way to do that because they offer you thousands of free different sounds, one shots and loops that you can use um, for free and there's no copyright on them in all your projects. So you can use some of these audio loops, make a song, release the song and you can make all the money from that song. So really valuable. Um, great free sounds that come with Logic. Let's dive in on how to use these Apple audio loops right now in Logic. This is an empty Logic Pro X template and where the audio loops browser is, or loca is located on the right side where this kind of loop is. So if we click on this loop, it will open up the Apple audio loops browser for us. We can click on it again to let that snap back inside. So if at any time we're looking for shortcuts, we can go over to this question mark on the left side and then that can we can hover over things and that will show us what the shortcut is. For example, I'm hovering over this loop here and on the left side of my screen, you can see that it says O. So if I want that loop browser open quickly, I can just press O on my keyboard and press O to snap it back. There are a lot of loops to fully listen to in one session, so it can be easy to get overwhelmed, which is why Logic gives you a lot of great different filters that you can narrow your, your, you know, what you want. You can filter by instrument. So if you for sure know you want a bass track, you can click bass and even uh, one layer down if you want like a synth bass or an electric bass. So let's say we do want uh, a synth bass. We would click off electric bass, click on synth bass, and then we can go through our samples here. If you click one, it will play it. If we click it again, it will stop. And also we can click in and then use our down arrow on the our keyboard to go through the samples quickly. <laughs> So we would go through that. If we're looking to start a song from scratch, we might find a longer loop that gets us inspired. Might, we might not start off um, we might not start off with a bass track right away. We might go for more of like a maybe a piano track. Um, and you can also filter the key. If you're looking to start a song, uh, a slower song, we can filter by tempo. And then we have slow tempos here, 70. And if we want um, the different keys here we can also be filtering by keys so let's say we did want a slow song so let's filter by tempo wow someone's honking and then let's go to this a major but let's say we didn't want major we wanted a, a sad song we can go to the minor key here under scale and we can also type in the signature if you know what signatures are in music theory and so um, let's say we want that D minor um, yearning piano. Very nice. Not very much of a loop though. So I'm looking for more. So this is very nice and ballady, right? So I'm going to drag that in. Let's say I want to start a song around this piano track. Click and drag. You can drag. Um, you can drag anywhere on to this gray area, or if you already have an audio track you want, you can drag it right onto that track. So let's just drag in this square here, and it will create an audio track for us under this piano um, software instrument track, sorry. So what we can do now is we wanna get this at the beginning, so we'll click on it, and then we'll click enter to bring our cursor over to the left, and then um, semicolon, and that will snap the audio track to uh, the beginning. And here is where we can build our song around. We can um, notice that it's it brought the tempo in for us at 71. And on the side here, it was 71. So we are have now a tempo of 71. We can um, click and drag the track here to fully start a song. We can be cutting the track up. If we, let's say we only actually wanted let's say the first bar or the first two bars let's say we only wanted the first two bars in a loop I can um, cut that and delete these other things and let's say I actually want just these and I want to loop these 
So now we have a loop of just the first two bars. It's all about your creativity from when you bring in the loops to what you do with them. Another great thing about audio loops is you can just change the tempo. If we didn't like the 71 tempo, we wanted it to be 100. So we go, double click at the top here and go 100. And now we're locked in at 100. Much faster. And you don't have to do any, well, it just it time stretched for you, which is really, really nice with audio loops. So you would keep going and using the different filters that Logic gives you. If you prefer, you didn't want to start with instrument, you can also go by genre or descriptors as well. Like we really want a distorted sound or a dark sound. So the filters are really helpful to narrow in on your choice. And you can be using one instrument filter, a couple genre filters, and a couple descriptors if you want to narrow that. And we can get quite deep. So if we want synths that are dark, um, in the house genre, we can, that's what it gave us. So if we want to kind of de delete all that, we would press this orange X and we can start from scratch. So using these filters are a really valuable way to get started. And the more filters you, you use, usually the better results you're going to get. And the less time you'll have to spend going through all the samples. The other way, if you don't want to use filters is you can go to the loop packs here. And these are what logic has kind of grouped. Um, hip hop packs. So this is the hip hop pack here, and we'll be able to kind of go through all the hip hop sounds. If we want to get back to all packs, we would go to the top and go all packs. A good thing to keep in mind is if you ever at all change any of the filters, make sure to get them off. Um, you can go and press that orange button, but that's not going to clear like your scale filter. So we had it on minor. Uh, if we're wondering why the results are small, we want to make sure to get that back to any signature or uh, sorry, any signature or any scale, and that's going to increase your results. The next thing I want to mention with audio Apple loops are the difference in audio loops that logic gives you. So the first one I want to mention and the most popular one are these blue audio loops. So they have this blue icon here. There are also yellow audio loops, and then there are also green audio loops. And so here's a green one. So I can drag this green one in and show you the difference. And you'll be sh oop, you should be able to visually see the difference into what all these loops mean. So here's the three audio loops that Apple gives you. Blue, which are actual audio signals where you can stretch, you can pitch, you can do whatever you want. Uh, green are MIDI notes and you can actually go in, go in and change the mini notes, uh, extend them, quantize them, figure out how their people are making mini, MIDI, so really valuable there as well. Um, yellow are drummer tracks. This is what a clap drummer track looks like and we can customize what that does in this bottom section here where we have this kind of quadratic square here where we can um, drag this yellow circle to loud and complex soft and complex, simple and soft, simple and loud, or you know, happy balance in the middle. We can go to the presets on the side here where you'll notice things are changing. And then we can narrow in on if we want chimes and, and cowbell, but we don't want this um, jam block, or we don't want a clap, or we want a tambourine, uh, if we want fills or swings, tons of customizations that you can do with the just you know clicking things in drummer tracks. That's Apple Audio Loop. Comment if you have any other questions or you want me to cover anything else um, with regards to Logic. I answer all the comments and I'd be happy to help. Also, feel free to subscribe and listen to some of my own music. I'm curious to know what you think about it and I hope to see you in the next video.